Okay, so. This chair is really squeaky and it's super annoying. Okay, so we're back with another video. Um, I've been running around, we've been going to, really we haven't been going to a lot of events. We've mostly been just getting ready for more indoor stuff, hosting Speaky V tournaments ourselves. It's right there. But today, basically, I'm going to be taking you guys over the fourth time <clears throat> I have changed my Polar Star. So, I got this AirTac upper here. Um, I've had it for two months now, maybe. Maybe, maybe not quite that long. Um, but I've been playing with it, and it's it's been awesome, to be honest. Um, so I'm giving you guys a full review. Um, that'll come after gameplay. I'll go into a little more depth talking about it, but for right now, um, I'm just going to take you guys over the basic, most basic things that I've done to it. The most not noticeable change that I have here is I've changed these classic army mags. These real low profile, super light. These things actually hold 120 rounds. So g and their mid caps only hold like 60 or 80, maybe, something like that. These hold 120. So these, even compared to a lot of M4 mags, um, these hold about the same. I Like like if you're using the Speaky B um, EPM mags, you're going to lose about 30 rounds with these. Um, but really to me, that's not bad, especially for me just wanted to try something new. This is an ARP9 lower, just standard ARP9 lower. I haven't painted anything, really, at all. It's just parts that I've thrown together. And then of course I've had this thing on here for a while. This is a Tap Airsoft um, drop stock and carbon fiber tubey thing. So, yeah. So, I don't want to take too much time talking and everything, just wanted to kind of go over the basics on that. Also, one more thing, um, I'm gonna have another video with my Blue High Kappa coming out here pretty soon, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, it's been a lot of fun running this at the indoor, um, and I haven't released any actual like indoor play with this other than like at SS in uh, Georgia. So I haven't gotten to play at my actual field and get a video out with this high kappa yet, so I'm really excited to do that, and uh, that's gonna be coming soon. So let's get into the gameplay. There's one up the stairs already. Find that flag. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Let's go. Green, green. Green. Game. No, I can't catch that. You're not Drop the flag and catch it. Do it. Ooh. Take. Tactical crap right there. Cease fire!
Hit it, hit it, hit it. Good shot, guys. Good shot. Good shot. Good shot, Brian. Good trade. He's out. He's out. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your mouth, Kate. I'm not doing that. You piece of crap. Oh, that was awesome. I hate this game. That was awesome. Harris, dude, I want to see where you got me like nine times from this little yeah. spot. Over <laughs> wow, that was a sniper shot. <laughs> Dude, that was so clean. <laughs> just that one tap, just boom, get the angle. Pshoom! That was a fantastic shot. Yeah, it do be like that. Kate, are you still working on this? Yeah. I killed the kid, but at the expense of the Right here, right here, right here, right here. Hey. Another one. Hey. Yeah, yeah, come on in. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Yeah. Team Harrison. Team Harrison. Team Harrison. Team Harrison. Okay, I got another one out. Right side, right, right, right. How's your 
There's one over there. I got one right here on this corner. Take my guns out. Come here, come here, come here. Right left, right left, right left. Right. Right back to the left, just right back to the left. Right side, right here. Right here, Kate, behind us, behind us, move! Okay, nice. Brian's the last one, Brian's the last one! Some thick arms there, boy, but okay. You guys have to help me put this on. Let me tell you. Green is three. Hey, quit going to the gym. Your arms are getting too big. Ugh. Is that not going to go? Uh, you can just wrap it like really tight. Yeah, I'm gonna tie it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut off the circulation. We'll cut off the circulation. That way you'll run faster because you want to live. Yeah, lob it that way. One out, one out, one out. He's out, he's out. Yeah, buddy. I love you. I love you too. <sighs> Drop my tracer unit down the stairs. 
Oh, oh no. was your tracer? Yeah, it was my tracer. No. So far, at least, um, I don't know, there might be something in the works right now just because they've had them out for a while and I know that not everybody has a fusion engine. This is only compatible with a fusion engine at the moment. I don't have my fusion engine anymore. I used to have one, but after I got this, <laughs> I realized it was only compatible with a fusion engine because, and I'll show you guys up close, the little bar that's on top of most AEG gearboxes, Polar Star Jack, Polar Star F2, um, all of those have to be put into a gearbox normally with that little fin on the top, okay? This, as you can see, is just flat all the way across, okay? So that little fin that sticks up is going to pose a problem. So I have a jack. I didn't want to get a fusion engine. I didn't want to wait until they came out with one specifically for jacks and F2s and AEGs. I cut the top of my gearbox off. <clears throat> Long story short, and I've had no alignment issues or anything like that. I'll explain all of this uh, with a shot a little bit closer so that you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. But there's one issue that I found with this that, and it's an issue that a lot of people were having. Um, so I'll get a closer angle here and I'll explain what that is. So basically, starting off with the gearbox portion of things. So like I was saying, this is totally flat on the top here. You can see that really all I've done Probably because I left my mag in it. Don't ever do that. Take your mag out first. That's my bad. You can see basically what I ended up doing was is just cutting this whole top off right here. It was actually a pretty easy modification. Just uh, took a Dremel tool and cut the top off. And you're going to lose about four screws here. But what I noticed was is it didn't cause any extra wiggle or alignment issues or anything like that. You just need a very small, you just need to cut that very very top part off here. So, and then you will be pretty much good um, for this to slide right back over the top. Now, this is something that I've noticed a lot of people have issues with here. Um, whenever you get these AirTac uppers, you'll notice that they come with external threads right here, okay? So you just take your tracer unit, screw it over, but they're also 3D printed. Okay, so I, to be honest, like I said, this is a completely honest review. Um, I got it, I put a trace unit on it, um, never played with it. I don't know if I bumped it or what, but I picked it up, put it on my gun, and looked down the barrel, and it was just to the side. Like, I mean, my tracer unit was just bent over to one side, and I was like, what in the world is up with that? So I took it off and the threads had peeled right off. Um, I, I absolutely have faith um, in AirTac and believe that they are going to fix this issue. But what I ended up doing personally, just because of course I didn't want to wait and I needed to play with it. And in a lot of speed QB games, like bigger tournaments and stuff, you are required to have a tracer unit. I just simply could not wait. So I had a friend that was able to 3D print me one of these. So this little gray piece right here um, replaces what was the part that the tracer unit screwed onto. So if you're looking at this, the uh, external threads are right here and it kind of holds your inner barrel in place as well. So you kind of like that. It'll hold it in the barrel, keep everything aligned. Um, so I was talking to him and I was like, hey, can you 3D print something like this? but with threads that are on the inside. Um, and he's like, yeah, I think that I could do something like that. So he made a mold and he got it to fit perfectly inside of the upper. It's kind of hard to get out without the tracing unit. And um, I was telling him, I don't want threads on the outside. I just think that, you know, I'm a little bit too hard on the gun. Um, if I slide into like center X or something like that, or I'm running and I trip and I fall, I feel like it's just going to break right off. So can you put threads on the inside of this? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So I have my lighter S here and that's what I wanted to make the mold off of just because I love this trace unit. It sits perfectly flush like you guys have seen. Um, in the video, it fits perfectly flush with the upper itself and it just, it looks super clean. They're light and they're just 
reliable. So this is a trace unit that I wanted the mold to be made off of. Um, the reason why it can't, why there's not a whole lot of potential for you to just be able to use whatever tracer unit you want is because this mold has to be kind of specific to the length of the edges of the tracer unit right here. So if you guys see kind of what I'm talking about, the threads are a certain length, they're like a certain height and everything. So is this little piece and then the location of the button. So the mold is specific to this tracer unit. I haven't gotten any others to properly fit into this mold. So, which is okay for me. I just get, you know, a couple lighter ass tracer units just in case one of them goes down or I lose one, something, just so that I have plenty. Um, and these molds are not that hard to make, so if I ever do want to change my tracer unit, I can just get another one of these. Um, also, a cool thing about this one is, specifically, there's, you guys can't see it, but there's a little ring around here. And what that's meant to accomplish is not turning on the button right here of the tracer unit. So whenever you screw it on, that button is not being pushed by this mold at all. Everything stays on, you can unscrew it, turn it on or off, screw it back on, and it doesn't affect it at all. So that is a really, really big plus to this. So, of course, that's something that I felt like I needed to mention about this, is at least right now, um, I notice a lot of these were breaking on people. Um, I still think that it's worth the money for this product because all in all, it is a fantastic design and idea. Um, I mean, this is something that I'm so glad they came up with. Also, one additional thing, this um, little rail mount section thing, I added myself because I love this bottom angle with my run cam. I don't have them close to me, but um, you guys will see in the video. Um, I have my run cam under here and it just, it gives a perfect shot of exactly where I'm aiming. If my head cam doesn't pick up, you know, the, the BB travel perfectly or anything like that, this is what that is meant to accomplish. So I just dremeled two holes, um, a little like line strip thing and then slid the key mod, um, rail attachment in there, screwed it down, made sure that it did not interfere with the um, path of the inner barrel. And then, yeah, I've been able to film from this angle, which I love so much um, ever since I made that modification. So those are just a couple of things that I've done to make this unit a little, a little stronger and um, fit my needs as far as, you know, getting content and just video, gameplay video and all that. So 